Today we're gonna implement a uh, dragging. So basically, you can drag uh, like a uh, actor or an enemy in to the generator, and it will basically suck it, uh, suck the <coughs> out. You know. So uh, let's just get into it. What I did, uh, go to the core, create a folder called AI enemy. So this is like one step closer to getting into AI. So we're gonna create a basic character. Get it. Uh, this will be BP and me main. Double click on it run and choose. Uh, I don't think, yeah, choose like a character. If you do not have it, you can go into im. You can go to add, add features or content pack, and you can add the third person to get the third person characters. Just if you don't have it, but uh, I do, so I imported. You know, we're gonna go into collisions. We're gonna go and take the ragdoll, then go to custom, and right here, uh, trace response visibility block. Compile and serve. Now we're gonna have a collision. This will basically add so when we, it overlaps, it will kill itself and uh, transfer the fuel basically. So I'm gonna use the box collision. Uh, and let it stay like this. You can mess around with it, but I just have a default. Right here, you can have begin overlap. That's all you will basically need. And does implement an interface, just like that. And let's create an interface for this one. This will be BPI enemy. And in the BPI enemy enemies, of course, don't forget go to the those object implement interface and add the BPI enemy. In the BPI enemy, uh, do F increase a uh, few uh, when I was editing uh, I kind of realized I misspelled fuel a lot of times so <laughs> sorry about it the inputs do increase fuel as well uh, and it's going to be a float so now in the generator class settings uh, this could be actually not the BPI fuel or BPI uh, enemy but rather and a BPI generator, but I'm just gonna call it BPI enemy. I don't care. There should be an inf interface. Double click on it right here. We're gonna do if it equals the max amount, bam, plug this in into a branch. If it does, at the max view, uh, the slow on the fog. Oh my god, what do you say? What do you say? So the current view to the max view, and after that. Uh, on the pulse, we gonna get not get set the current view. Uh, just add that, add the increase view that we are setting manually to the current view. This is pretty simple, straightforward, I would say. In the FD please view, we set the percentage. You can just copy that, paste it into our increase, and that's it. So, this will be our uh, increase view. And let's add a cool color to it as well. Fantastic. Now we just have to call this event uh, and do the drag and dropping function. So right here in the BP enemy main, we're going to add the drag and dropping. Not drag and dropping. Oh my god. From the other actors, we have the F increase. And right here, promote the increase view into a variable called the Vorf. You can name it whatever. Have it instance at the tool. So now if you drag out the enemy, you will see in the default the warp, I'm gonna set it to 25. And now you can just create the children and add, you know, different... Uh... Now what we have to do is actually drag the enemy to there. Uh, one more thing that we forgot to add is uh, destroying the character. So right here after that we just destroy it. Let's test out if it actually works. I'm not really confident in myself. So. Uh, it did work, as you can see, so, um, bam, it just died. Uh, but now we want it actually to drag it in, like a dead body, basically, when it gets killed. So to do it, we're gonna go into our main blueprint. We're gonna do a macro. This will be a line trace. So basically, we're gonna have a, the interaction system, <laughs> if that makes sense. If you 
do not know how to create an interaction system. What the fuck are you doing, man? Like, what the hell are you doing, man? It's the simplest thing ever, so just do a line trace, right? Uh, buy a channel, plug that shit in, plug that shit in. We need the start and then how do we get that? I have no fucking clue. We get the first person character, get world uh, location, plug that in, get forward vector, right? Multiply that shit, float. 250 or 150 gonna add get world location add this to here bam we have it right here just uh basically do a branch uh break this right here we're gonna do hit actor gonna promote it into a variable i already have these variables actually all this variable specific uh hit component promote that into a variable as well i have that variable as well basically add it to the output so the first one is I don't know why I cannot name the component, but okay. Anyways, in the event graph, we're gonna have a custom event called interact. We're gonna get the line trace. Else you can actually do is plug in this value into the input, and this can be uh, lines um, length. I don't know if you type that length like that. 150 I will say. Right here you can do either casting or an interface. We're gonna do an interface. So in the code blueprints, just do an interface called BPI main layer. And right here we're gonna do F interact. We're gonna have few inputs. First one will be the actor. That's gonna be handy, handy later. Then we're gonna have physical handle, handle, uh, hit component, oh my god, component, and I think that's it. So the actor will be BP main player, or FPS, I think, player. Physical handle, you can just type it in, or handler, I think this one, uh, physical uh, handle, oh, correct, uh, it has object difference. It component, a uh, primitive uh, component. Okay, uh, so now in the FP FP movement player, from the hit component, we can call the increase, uh, not increase, but interaction. Actor will be self physics handle. We're gonna add that. Right, this one. We already have that. Okay, what a coincidence. Hit component, plug that in. Later, uh, we're gonna do a, like a switch or something like that. Now in the generator, we can, well actually, we need an output as well. So go back to BPI main player. We need an output called grabbing. This is a boolean. So now in the generator class settings, have the same interface main player. Double click on it and grabbing will be true. From the physics handle, grab component at location with rotation. Component that's gonna be the hit component get world location plug that into the location and plug everything in uh, That should be it and right here grabbing promote that into a variable Bam. next up We're gonna do event tech. I think we already have it right here Gonna make a sequence first. We'll go right here second right under here. We're gonna get the physical handler I'm gonna set target location and rotation before that we have to check if we are actually grabbing uh, of course you can do a timer here but uh, you know cut up soon right here we're gonna add a scene component uh, you may ask you what what we already think about it? uh because it's gonna basically go to here so it's just stable more stable i would say myself uh would be gonna grab you will see so if you get this uh it's the same as the line tray so get world location like that but for the rotation, actually no, uh, for the location as well, we have to add uh, add the forward vector, so sorry. Get a first person camera, get forward vector, multiply that, uh, float and have it as, I would say, 100. Plug that in, and from the first person, get uh, world rotation. Plug that in as well. So you can comment this out as uh, grabbing or setting location for grabbing. I guess something like that. 
That's just so when you grab it, right, it's gonna basically play this over and over again. We almost can start doing it, but we have to make this as a ragdoll. Because basically how the dragging works is if it's a physical object, so it has simulate physics on, it will basically allow you to do it with a line trace, right? So that's how it basically works. So we're just doing a line trace. When we hit the object, it's gonna go and follow the line trace. Line trace in quotes. What I'm gonna add actually to the BP generator right here, where we interact. Wait, what the fuck is it in BP generator? Oh my god, I'm stupid. Bro, do not let me do this with Unreal Engine. What the fuck did I just fucking do? It it was my mistake, my mistake. In the in the generator, you should not put the interaction. We are not gonna interact. I don't know why I did it. So go to class settings, just uh, take away the interface of the uh, main plot. I don't know why I did that. It should be in the BP enemy. Class settings, add the BPI main plot. I don't know why I did that. Don't ask questions. I'm super duper tired. Just plug everything inside uh, right here. Get world location. I don't know why I did that. Anyways, for the rotation from the actor, get a camera. This should be first person camera. Get rotation. Plug it in. It's just, just in case. So for the BP enemy, we need it to basically die. So we're gonna do a custom event called dead. We're gonna do simulate physics for the mesh. So right here, so it's a true. And right here, destroy component capsule. So it doesn't interfere with us. Now event begin. This is just for now, we do dead. You would put this when you kill it. So, uh, so you can see it just died. We take him. Okay, we can't. Let's see why. Let's do go to line trace. Do for duration. Oh, yeah, I'm stupid. So the last thing that you have to do is have a left mouse button. Bam. Do interact. And on release. We basically set the grabbing to false and get the physical handler um, release component. So if we play, I cannot take him. Why so? So the problem could be that I right here, the target should be the hit actor. Um, so now you can see when I pick him up, it's just dragging along. So, the thing is, I want it to stay at the ground the most, because it's more realistic. Because if you're just gonna grab it and blow away, that's gonna look really weird. If you want that, you can delete the scene component, right? Right over here, where we have the scene, and replace the event tick that we created right here. The logic basically replace it with this. It's gonna basically do that. So if I pick it up, you can see I can drag it. Why does it not? Okay, so if it doesn't work, set the box collision onto the mesh. So it should look like this. Um, I know there's a lot of bugs, I just feel tired as f So basically now you can pick it up, you can see. Um, the rotation, the location isn't really accurate to the camera, but uh, you can see it, it does the job. Uh, that so that's pretty easy. I think you got it. If not, oh well.